Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Tom Smith with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Welcome back to the stream. Um, it's been a while since I've been here, so I'm a little rusty. Bear with me. But I think I have a pretty good tasting for you this evening. We are uh, unveiling our latest distillery partner, and um, we're going to be tasting through 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of uh, of those whiskeys, basically barrel picks that myself and our old friend Jenna Eli made uh, back in June of 2022. Um, so very, very excited to have you guys join us. I know it was kind of a, a last minute um, notification today. So uh, thanks for thanks for being with us tonight. And for those of you who who watch tomorrow after the release, I um, hope you enjoy everything. But uh, without further ado, I have two very, very special guests that I want to uh, bring on. And number one, you know her well. Um, she was with the Society for years and um, an alumnus and a friend and an excellent palate in Miss Jenna Eli. Jenna, welcome back. Hey, thank been, you for having me. It feels so it's nice to be long. back. I know. This feels it's really good. Long. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming. So you and I actually hopped on a jet plane and went out to Seattle, yes. and uh, and we're we're scooped up by two dashing gentlemen from Woodenville <laughs> Distilling Company. One of whom is with us this evening, uh, Mr. Garrett Epling. Garrett, welcome so much. Well, Hi. welcome. Thanks so much for for being on the on the stream with us, and uh, it's it's great to have you, man. I'm happy to be here. It's uh, we had a blast picking this barrel out. So anytime we can have a little bit of time together and revisiting these picks, um, you can get me on on this anytime. Awesome. And then just uh, very quickly, I want to welcome folks who are here. So again, guys, I'm not really this isn't my bag. So bear with me. Um, but uh, Tom R. First on, as always. Thank you, sir. Hi, everyone. Cheers. Uh, Kim. Hi. Says hi, Tom. Hi, Kim. Good. Good to see you. Uh, Mamuka 77. Good evening. Good evening. Sean, Christine's here. Uh, yep. I am in a Rick house. That's right. And, uh, who else do we have? Ryan. Hello. Welcome. Um, and we'll, we'll have plenty of folks coming in, I think over the next few minutes. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so let's maybe start by painting a picture for everyone, right? Um, so Jenna, it was actually Jenna's relationship with a gentleman who could not be on the call this evening. So imagine, if you will, a, a Jeep Grand Cherokee carrying these three people and one more dude named John Trainer, who is the he's essentially the business director, right, for for um, Woodenville. Is that correct? That's yeah. correct. At the time that we made that drive, he was our commercial director for our, our company. And he was responsible for the national distribution and release of Woodenville specifically. He's now the uh, global director of American whiskey uh, with Moa Hennessy. So it's still Thanks. in our offices and still in our our uh, our operations. But uh, wow. and on even fancy more, dude, even isn't he? That's right. Yeah, he is. <laughs> but, but Jenna, you've known John for years. If you could color in that part of the story for us. Yeah. So actually the first time I ever met John. So when I started Whiskey A Go Girl, I was living out in Los Angeles. Um, and I remember getting invited to the release of Glenn Morangy's Aster when that came out. Right. Isn't that at the right? That's what it is. Um, and so I get invited to this release. Dr. Bill Lumsden's there. Um, and it's up in the Hollywood Hills in this like mansion. And I just remember showing up to that place and being like, I don't belong here. I was like, are they, why did they invite me here? Like, this is so yes. fancy and so awesome. And I'm like, whiskey royalty is in this room. There are tons of like, Brad Jack was there. Um, like tons of just like people who were in whiskey that I just really admired. And so I get to the, it's, it's like the house is like up on a big hill. And so I'm waiting at the bottom of the hill because they're like, oh, there's like a, like a shuttle that will take you up the hill. And I'm waiting and all of a sudden here comes this Glen Morangy golf cart and John's on it. And that was the first time I ever met him. And from that moment, he was like, he pulled up and he's like, you need a ride? And I was like, uh, yeah. And I still like, I begged him for that Glen Morangy golf cart. And I was like, please let me have it. It was like the coolest thing. And that was the first time I ever met John. And just over the years, he's always been like a mentor for me. Um, very important in my whiskey life. He's 
guided me through so many things, decisions. He's just been a great human to know. Um, and one day I think we were joking like, oh, when are we going to do a wooden wall society pick? You know, it was just like casual conversation. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did so it. So he was like, well, come on out. Yeah. We did it. So, so you and I came on out. And, we did. Uh, it was it was the day it was actually <clears throat> was it National Bourbon Day or was it the day after yeah. National Bourbon Day? Ish, June sixth, June seventh, something like that, something like that. Maybe it was, it was like it was around National. I think, Bourbon yeah, because I'm like, there's no way these guys are available, and they're like, they were available. Awesome, <laughs> you know. So because yeah, we had to postpone that trip, we so, were going to do it like originally one day, and then mm -hmm. we had to like reschedule it for for that yeah. day, and yeah. it just happened to be so, the right day. To so so we wake up early, right? It was like they picked us up at seven a.m. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm like I'm leaving the hotel and to get us coffee uh, down the street, and right. there's this really tall dude like smiling <laughs> real big at me, and I'm just like, whoa! Like let me just walk past this guy. Anyway, it was Garrett. Um, he was like trying to like get my attention, and I was I was too pre coffee to 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 realize, but uh, yeah, so. So they drive us out to Quincy, Washington, to, to the Omlin family farm. And I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself now. So now we're at the farm and we're getting to see where all of the, all of the um, ingredients are grown and where all the whiskey is stored. And we're about to, we're about to make our, our barrel picks, so to speak, right? <clears throat> but I feel like this is a good part for you, Garrett, to kind of fill in what Woodenville, or in terms of, of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society Distillery B8, is, is all about. I love that. Yeah, I, I love the storytelling part of it. So I'm going to try to be concise because I, I feel like it's going to be opportunities to get into more details uh, as we expand. But we, we started Woodenville, uh, it was two best friends in 2010. Uh, distilling wasn't legal in the state of Washington until 2008. So there were some laws and, and some legislation that changed at that point. Um, but we've made everything that we've ever sold. So nothing's ever been sourced, nothing's ever, everything we've made is, has been our own. So it takes a little bit of time for that five year maturity and that barrel uh, to come around. But we are very proud to be uh, 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 locally sourced. We source all of our grains from that uh, fourth generation family farm, which is now that partnership and that relationship is expanded to be where we actually age our barrels as well, which has in turn created better whiskey for us for the environment that they have on the farm. Uh, we'll dive into those details a little bit more, but the Omelin family farm is where we drove. The almonds have been an essential part of our business ever since. Um, and we've gone from making about one barrel a day back in 2010 to making them uh, just a little over uh, 40 barrels a day. Now we're going through over 30,000 pounds of grain and still sourcing from a uh, single uh, fourth generation local family farm here in Washington. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. So should I dive into the barrel? Should we get more story? Should we build context and go uh, point by point? Because I can talk about some of the, we can talk about some of the logistics when we dive into these glasses too. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> so we were offered six whiskeys. So I have a different virtual background here. Uh, let me, let me uh, switch here. So uh, can you guys see that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So these were the six barrels. If you see there on the side, that's my yellow notebook um, <laughs> that that we were uh, that we were presented with. And of these six, Jenna and I chose three. And what we uh, what we decided choosing were, were three that that had obviously the commonality of all being Woodenville bourbons, all you know, all having that DNA, but each of them, at least to me, and I think to, to you guys as well, really accentuated one part of, of that house style or, or that distillery profile. So what should have been a release of one cask at a time, then kind of turned into this distillery dive, which for, for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with the distillery dive, it, it, we're, we're focusing on... Um, whiskey from the same spirit run or, you know, distilled at the same distillery. Some kind of parameters are the same, some are different, but what bears out is the uniqueness of the single cask. And I think this is another uh, 
a very clear um, indication of that that uniqueness. So why don't we get into uh, shall we get into whiskey number one and then yes. maybe we can you can talk about mash bill and things like that. And so everybody who's who's here with us, again, thank you for joining us and grab a glass, let us know what you are tasting. And um, uh, just a few uh, few guys. Now Scott's not here tonight. Scott had the night off. Um, it's just uh, it's just us three. And so Christine was asking, are you guys going to do another release of bourbon finished in Ardbeg barrels, please? That, um, that so would be that would be sweet, but I'd be willing to bet good money that they're not going to part with any of those casks for us. That um, that is possible, Christine. You just asked a <laughs> a beautiful, sweet, and kind of sad question for me as well, because that might have been a, the most beautiful. Uh, Woodenville finish that I've ever had. The, the short answer is unfortunately no. Um, it was a logistics of a bourbon that we were making called a double or a whiskey, I'm sorry, that we were making that was off our bourbon mash, but it was a double barrel whiskey. So it was just, it was distilled slightly higher, aged in two different barrels, and then blended with a touch of our bourbon just to build that robust flavor that was lost in distillation at a high proof. Um, after that four year maturity in the two separate barrels in that blending process, uh, we moved that over into an Ardbeg barrel uh, for, I believe it was about a four week, which it didn't take long to take on that smoke, but it was absolutely incredible. Uh, so a short answer is no, but I love your question. And uh, if you find somebody, some out there and you know where I can get some, if there's any left on a shelf anywhere, I would, I'd love to follow uh, up with that. <laughs> all right. So I'm just, sorry, I'm playing around like, yeah, this, that's probably better for us. Right. Um, so our first whiskey I'm, I obviously have a big screen behind me, so I'm going to do my best. Can you guys see this all right? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good look. So this is cast number B8.1, Last Minute Thriller. This is a five-year-old bourbon. Let me throw up the, the information here. This is five years old at uh, cast strength, 57.4% ABV in a new American oak charred barrel. And... Um, yeah, so this is this is the this is the first one. This is the inaugural cast. Uh, these will be released tomorrow at one p.m. Eastern time, and they will be available a la carte if you wish. Or really, I, I feel like how they should be uh, discovered and explored is um, in a bundle, all three of them. So they're they're ninety five bucks a pop, or you can save a few dollars at least and and um, get the the trio at two hundred and seventy dollars with free shipping. And um, you can really dive into the side by side by side. But what a lovely starting place. Um, can you talk about mash bill? Can you talk about um, barrel protocol? Because I understand you guys you guys have a bit of a history with independent stave company. We certainly do. Awesome. They've been incredible partners for us. So I'll start with the mash bill. Our mash bill, this is a high rise style bourbon, which happens to be a style of bourbon that I are automatically kind of lean towards myself. I love the way that rye balances, uh, balances the corn, but we had a full flavor of corn at 72%, 22% uh, rye and 6% malted barley. We do spend about 30% more on our barrels than most whiskey companies do. As you mentioned, we're, we're working with the independent stave company, as you can kind of see behind my, behind my head here. Uh, independent stave are remarkable coopers. Um, the cooperage that we're getting our barrels from is coming out of Lebanon, Missouri. Uh, all the oak is uh, white oak is rather than uh, they had the choice between red oak and white oak and white oak was definitely the choice. Um, it's all um, selectively harvested from the Ozark region in Missouri. Uh, what's unique about our barrels, uh, in addition to just that sourcing and that cooperage, we do the wood is seasoned versus kiln dried, and it does lend a much more beautiful flavor. So all of our wood is seasoned for 18 months. Uh, before it's turned into a barrel. Uh, we're using a char level number four, which those of us kind of geeky in the industry know that that's referred to as the alligator char, the deepest char we can get. And our barrel heads are toasted to bring out just compliments of, of beautiful flavors. And if I can just piggyback onto your compliment or your comment on buying that trio or having all three of these, this is the whiskey consumer in me that just gets like 
insatiably fascinated with how beautiful each individual barrel is. You know, when we blend multiple barrels together, we're doing enough things consistently where we get a very consistent, um, a consistent expression, a consistent flavor. However, these, these, the wood tells its own story. And I do, I love, I'm loving taking this journey with you guys again tonight. So, and, uh, <clears throat> Garrett, sorry to interrupt, but I think there's another part to that though, with Independent Stave Company, you guys, if I recall from what I've read, you, you guys started working with them at a pretty opportune time, right? When they were just starting their, their kind of experimental um, seasoning protocols and things like that. So if, right. if I recall correctly, you actually got to play around and do your own experimenting and decide which air seasoned or, or kiln dried protocol was best for, for the whiskey. Yeah, that's correct. And we were excited enough to work with them and they were new enough in this space. The, out of Missouri, that cooperage is typically making more craft style barrels and uh, wine barrels. So th this was a newer adventure for them and they were learning a lot as well. So yeah, we absolutely, we tried kiln dried wood. We tried six months season wood, 12 months, 18 months and 24 months. Um, we tried regular heads, toasted heads. We tried toasted barrels. We tried so many different types of expressions to see what was going to complement our whiskey the best. And this got to be something that they they learned in their cooperage process as well. Like what was the treatment of this wood going to do and how was it going to help the whiskey perform? And having a baseline of, a, of the same distillate uh, gave them a lot of context, a lot of information. So the barrels that we're using now, I might be misquoting the terminology that they use, but it's kind of advertised as their as their premium craft spirit barrel um okay. and and for good reason for good reason. yeah for sure so what are we getting here <laughs> mm. there she price. goes <laughs> get it <laughs> don't There's don't a... don't hold back jenna please <laughs> let okay, it fly girl like, at first you do get like that kind of dusty like corn sweetness but then there's almost like a piney peppermint note, like something just very fresh and like almost menthol-y in my nose. It's like a piney, yeah. like a forest, pepperminty, like pine kind of note that is on the nose that is like so beautiful. <laughs> I love the peppermint note. Yeah, that really, that really pops. Like, that herbaceousness is beautiful. And on the nose again, I, I'm, I'm only nosing here. Um, almost like a, a bit about that cooling mentholic uh, yeah. aspect. That there, there's it almost leans into a bit of Zechuan pepper, like that kind of cooling kind of spice, um, ever so slightly. But I feel like underpinning it is this lovely confection, this very nice like maple syrup kind of. Yes. Maple leaf character, you know? Yes. Yeah, like a yeah, like a dusty like corn cake maple That's syrup. Right. Yeah. And Jason, how you doing, buddy? Uh good to see you and um good to have you. And Jason mentions that Dave Pickerel had some influence in Woodenville start. Jason, that yeah. that's absolutely correct. Yeah. When uh when Brett and Orlin got this company started. Uh, they grew up, they went to Bothell High School. They went to Central Washington University together and they stayed friends. They were best friends through college and they stayed in touch. So this journey really had started with uh, poker nights on Fridays with buddies that they'd stayed in touch with um, and they were passing bottles around, right? They were always bringing whiskey bottles for it. So they had some experience in drinking great whiskey, but they knew that they had the humility to understand that they'd never made it before and they really needed a great mentor. Uh, fortunately for them, they'd asked around quite a bit and Dave was recently at that point in 2010, getting into consulting. Uh, so he was the mentor for us. He was, he was everything. Uh, he was a lighthouse and a big reason, um, you, you know, he, he's got the nicknames, the Johnny Appleseed of whiskey and the, uh, the godfather of craft whiskey, and he's earned them all. And he, uh, he was the reason that we had a world-class spirit in five years versus figuring out, um, you know, what we what we needed to change about the production process that we were doing. One of the, the favorite things I've ever heard Brett and Orland both say about Dave was not only his mentorship, but his friendship was something that they coveted, but he always had an answer for any question that they had along the way. He really helped them understand where they could craft something that was specific to their intention and the flavor profile they were trying to execute 
versus areas where they just really couldn't ever cut corners and compromise. And for that reason, you know, five years out of our first distillation, we had world-class spirit. And I'm confident Brett and Orland knowing them, they're just salt of the earth men. They are, they're fantastic people. They're hard workers. They're incredibly honest and disciplined. So I know that they would have found their journey along the way. They certainly would have found success uh, knowing who they are, but what Dave's influence and his guidance and his friendship, we were, uh, we were able to get it right the first time and uh, push it along a bit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, And actually uh, we, so I I was out in Seattle um, at the end of our, um, tasting panel experience tour with Charlie, Charlie McLean. And um, I hung around an, an extra day and had the pleasure of hosting an event at Woodenville Distillery to launch these fine, uh, fine bourbons. And, um, and Brett was nice enough to join us. And Brett spent some time with us and, and kind of gave us his, his view on, on how everything started. And it's a great story. And it's, you know, it's a really good group of people you have there and you just feel that everyone's heart is really in it, man. You know, and it's, it's super cool to see. It's really, really cool to see. Can we drink this please? Yeah, please. please. All right. I I jumped the gun. (laughs) Cheers. I, I have to break it to you. You, you picked some really yeah. good. <laughs> well, thankfully, um, you know, Jenna was there because I mean, her palate is amazing. I. This is like, I, I mean, it's even better than I remember. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it, beautiful by this, please. Like, th- this is like a no brainer. This is like, actually, even question gonna, it, don't think about it. No, you're right. This, like this is my kind of bourbon. Like this is my like well, totally at fifty just, at fifty seven point four. It's not kicking you in the teeth. First of all, no, no. Not you at know. All. And what's the what's the entry proof that you guys uh, are doing? Our entry proof is one ten. One ten. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so fifty fifty five percent. Yep. Yep. So that does elevate a little bit. I didn't yeah. mention I was going to talk more about some of the logistics as that would come yeah. while we tasted, but, but part man. of the benefit to aging in the, and Quincy in the farm is it's Highland desert for us. And the, the temperature contrast that we see is almost identical to what you see in like Bardstown, Kentucky. So we see about 125 degree temperature influx between the highs in the summers and the lows in the winter. And being an arid climate, we lose more water in the angel share than we lose the alcohol. So it does elevate. Yeah. Uh, just a touch over that five-year process, but over five years, I mean, that's not that's not crazy. I mean, it's not bad. There are some other distilleries in the U.S. that you know that were there. You're you're up in the high 60s sometimes, mm-hmm. and it's it's fun for a couple minutes. But this, you know, you can't session with something like that. You know, this is yeah. this is quite quaffable, and at least in theory, and and originally this was more of like the fruit forward expression. And it certainly is. It has that beautiful, like ripe red fruit character. Um, but, but the spice has really picked up. Mine's, mine's been open for a little while now. And the, the, the spice compliment is lovely. It's a really nice, like baking spices and Mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. This was freshly open for me today. This is the only one that I hadn't tasted yet. And it is like, the, the initial like first kind of taste that you get on the palate, it almost reminded me of like cherry Twizzlers, like liquid cherry Twizzlers. Yeah. Like it was just big, red, yeah, bright, like, big fruit. And then yeah. like, as you kind of like take a minute and you're talking, you're like, wait a second, this is like quite spicy. And like, as you said, like big baking spice. And like, I mean, it's, you almost get a lot of that rye content on this. Like I, it's quite rye-ish forward um, in that spice element. It's oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> wait till you try. Wait till you try the next one. <laughs> I Sorry, love you. Gonna, no, yeah. I love here. that you said cherry Twizzler. I was like, my palate was trying to pick out like almost like a cherry Dr Pepper or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cherry, cherry yeah. cola, that kind of thing. Yeah, all that spice that that you were describing on the nose is still there in the body, but. Now, Tom, to your point, that big red fruit flavor starts to be added, and the mouthfeel is perfect. Oh. Like I, I want this. If you could put a taste or an, or a feel in a dictionary, like I would want this to represent cast rank bourbon. Like it's it drinks smoother and much calmer than the proof would suggest. And 
I just love that that spice doesn't go away, but it adds that that mid palate expression really gets big on the fruits. Yeah, that's real nice. Yeah, it, very it's very good. Amplified and all of those things, and that fruit kind of forward entry, and then that big spice component. It's, I mean, it's really at least for me, this is like everything that I personally like in a bourbon. Um, like I don't usually go for bourbons that are just kind of like sweet, like that corn sweetness. That's not typically, that's not what I kind of go for, but this is like, so, and I hate the word balance, but it is, it's like, you get all Why the things. Why do you hate the word balance? Cause I just feel like it's overused sometimes, but okay. I feel like this is just so like everything that you're looking for is here and it's like amplified mm -hmm. and it's, it is just, it's so beautiful it is so beautiful <laughs> i i added some water i added some some water a good dose of water and the the that kind of cherry type fruitiness comes out on the nose quite a bit now the sweeter undertones are blooming yeah There's not so much of, not, not so much of the spice yeah i i i don't know a better word than balance jenna because i agree 100 percent. all those flavors that we're describing are so robust and they're so bold and they're so present but there's no harsh contrast between their expression it really it, yeah. it's a beautiful barrel yeah it's, it's very, just like very rich good. decadent on your on your palate and like you said that mouthfeel is just like that just like unctuous -y, like stuck to every nook and so cranny in there let me ask you something. You have this family who have gone all in on you guys. You know, like it sounds like they're growing all the grains that you need. Um, and you've never and, and it also sounds like you um, are have you you did a lot of experimentation. You know what works best as far as barrel protocol. Have you ever thought to play around with mash bill? Have you ever thought to ask them to grow some wheat? And you know, see, see how that goes as a weeded bourbon or the almonds actually used to grow wheat. Um, and that was part of their uh, crop rotation for juvenile practices. Uh, and they would, they, they were growing wheat when we met them, uh, soft winter wheat, I believe. Uh, they now, uh, they didn't grow rye when we met them. Then they're now the largest rye producers in the state of Washington and rye is an equally competent cover crop. Uh, so it's, it, it fits into the crop rotation perfectly. Um, and fortunately, as small as they are, uh, they have agreements with, uh, the, with properties and farms around them to lease land when necessary. And they can have a land leased from them as just part of their community out there. And we've got about, we, our planning sits about three years out. So the omelets know how much grain we're going to need, um, you know, down the road with, yeah. with a pretty strong level of advance. They do all the cleaning and drying of our grains as well. And they've got a phenomenal production out there. So it was, uh, as you can imagine, as early whiskey entrepreneurs getting good quality, consistent quality uh, for uh, for a small distillery that didn't have a lot of demand or a lot of weight or a lot of pull uh, was a really challenging thing for, for Brett Norland. So there was this definitely the star aligning moment where uh, everybody wins for this partnership. And they're just absolutely incredible people too. Well, I mean, it's, and, and people, a lot of folks throw around, you know, grain to glass or, you know, wh whatever you, whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, most of that's true, but you got to get this from elsewhere. You got to get that from elsewhere. And, and it sounds like you guys, you know, have, have really kind of struck that chord perfectly. I'm going to take a I'm going to take a baby detour on this and just express that my background, I've worked in restaurants for 22 years before I worked for Woodenville Whiskey. So my lens for whiskey is truly a, a consumer. I drink a lot of it. Um, I enjoy a lot of it, but I became a huge fan of Woodenville. I like the people as much as I like the whiskey. Working for this company has been an absolute treat. It's been a dream uh, to just it never feels like work to be able. To yeah, it shows, man. Project. It shows. Um, and then the omelets, to your point, uh, kind of my my long journey and detour to get back to it. Um, we are who we say we are. You know, there's no marketing story behind us. There's no inflated thing. I, I love that you came out here and got to see uh, the topography changes in our state when you drove through the pass with us and got to the farm and saw the Omelin house. You saw right. Arnie and Phyllis's right. house. You saw Rick house. It, and it is uh, it's a special thing. It's a unique thing and it's an authentic thing. And I'm so thrilled that you guys came out to spend that day with us and, and spend time picking, picking these barrels. And I'm very grateful like, for it tonight. I, I always, <laughs> I always knew, I always knew theoretically being a wine guy as well. Um, and I'm sure, you know, you, you have a bit of a wine background. I always knew that there was, 
this other part to Washington. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> to actually go there and to and to start in Seattle, really the only part of Washington I've ever been to. Yeah. Um, and to drive over the Snoqualmie Pass and just see the the whole land just open up in front of you. There, there are a few there are a few moments that are that are like that, you know, maybe like descending from the drive from Phoenix to Sedona when you when you descend into the into the the Verde Valley or whatever that's called there, like something like that. But it's really wild, man. It's it's really cool. And then you see that patchwork farmland everywhere and it's it's just incredible. I'm yeah. so thrilled you made the trip and anybody watching, if you ever do get that chance, that is one of the most beautiful drives to see our state for what it was. I felt like the most um, hyper-focused, like caffeine driven, like tour guide, just like interrupting our conversation to make sure you looked out the window and saw the things are changing, right? Like it's salt water, it's pine trees, it's sagebrush, it's Highland desert. And it just, it happens in an instant. And it's- I'm pretty sure you pointed out some rare birds. Um, <laughs> I might. A little bit of wildlife. In so there. Some of the wildlife yeah. promise was a little elusive. We didn't leave quite early enough for that, but yeah. yeah. There, there's some bridge talk in there too. Like we crossed a few bridges and you were like, so this bridge is like, yeah. I remember that. Indeed. Yeah. It was, it was pretty <laughs> thorough, I have to say. Um, yeah. It's a beautiful so guys, place. Let's, on the let's get to our second cast here. So this is cast number, uh, cast B 8.2. Jenna, would you mind holding it up? Have you yeah. have you lost your touch? Should we read the tasting notes? Oh, sure, sure. Can I do that? You want to do Will number one? Me? Yeah. Will you let me? B8.1, <laughs> please go ahead. Okay, so yeah, so B8.1, last minute thriller, is juicy red cherries, pineapples, and strawberry shoelaces dangle from pine trees above fine oak and coconut sawdust steeped in vanilla essence. Oh, so sure. strawberry cheese is, I guess, they're Twizzlers. I'll buy that. Yeah, I'll sounds, take it. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, so let's let's get into our second whiskey here. Um, would you mind holding up that bottle? Because I just feel like my 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 production kit here is a bit behind the times. Are my you able to? Little, my light's a little aggressive, but uh, okay. Me. All right. Well, everybody can see the five year old. That that's the most important part, yeah. I guess. Uh, yeah. So this is cast number B eight point two, lazy lakeside picnics. Um, also five years old. Also distilled in April of twenty seventeen. Now full disclosure: these were not from the same spirit run. They were all distilled within the same month, but all three were on different days. I believe it was like the third, the fifth, and the twenty eighth of April, twenty seventeen that they were that they were distilled. But every other part of every other aspect of of their production is the same. Um, the uh, well, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that because I I never asked before right now where they were in the Rick House, but I'm not sure if you could answer that. So I, I you know, I could um, with with a little bit more time than I have right now, I could pull that information up. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we have it really well mapped. But what's unique about our circumstances, we don't rotate our barrels. Our Rick Houses are only going about six barrels high. And the temperature fluctuation internally from the outside to the inside, top to bottom, never exceeds like that three to four degree Fahrenheit uh, contrast. Um, so they sit pretty, pretty consistently. We're, we're confident that all of the contrast that you're seeing is not necessarily the rickhouse placement, but it is actually the contrast in the wood in the individual barrel itself. Nice. But casks, the same. Mash bill, mm -hmm. the same. Absolutely. Yep. Yet so clearly different from the first one. This note, so yeah. There's a com. You can see the common thread slightly. Yeah. You can see that yeah. essence of Woodenville, but there's such a different characteristic between each barrel. I poured I myself mean, a little I'm, bigger. I'm putting a bit there. more like Mexican hot chocolate here, like melted Ooh. milk chocolate with a little bit of spice. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I'm a shitty taster, so don't, don't take my word for it. You guys pipe, pipe up, please. Honestly, yeah. the first when I just got my nose in this, it reminded me of like, um, you know, like a shoe shiner, like somebody okay. who, yeah. as they say, yeah. shoes. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it gives off like shoe polish and like leather shoe and like boots and like, 
There's like a varnishy, like leathery, mm. like note to this. It's like a little, just like deeper and like mysterious <laughs> and yeah. like leathery. And like this one smells like that first one was just like big and bold and like rich and all of the, the, the right places. This one is like more sophisticated almost. I, I, I agree. I feel like it's, while it's robust, it's more subtle. Um, yeah. And I get, I get less of the herbaceousness, a little bit less of that. That cabinet spice is still present, but it, yes. it is, I like that. Yeah, it's fancy. Yeah, this one smells like, <laughs> you know, like sometimes like when you, you have like old scotch whiskey, like mm -hmm. there's just like a feeling or like you can nose it or whatever the case is. There's just like a feeling that you get when it comes to when you know it's like an old scotch whiskey and th it's get this is giving me that vibe and while like we have that kind of yeah i love that vibe i think that's a beautiful description and i've always loved your palette you were doing this when we were picking these barrels too i, I it's that phenomenal description you're very yeah, in touch you. with that and i like i love how this holds its earthiness it doesn't quite have the dustiness yeah. that we had on the nose of of the of point one but point two still has that kiss that kind of undertone of a little earthy Earthy yeah. quality through that. Can you guys hear me okay? Because I feel yeah. like yeah. I I dropped for a second and okay. I hope no, hope my just... hope my Wi-Fi holds. Uh, <laughs> it's very it's very much after hours at, at my office space. Um, <laughs> but yeah, certainly some of that kind of forest floor type yeah. aspect that yeah. you can get from from certain bourbons. Cheers. Yeah, this one's like. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Silky entry and then spice, 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 crescendoing. Ooh. Like it's like silky milk chocolate and then just like yes. spice explosion. Yes. Ooh. That Crescendo. is like. Silky is mm. like, like yeah. <laughs> a perfect word. That is, I mean, it's like butter almost. It is just like this. Oh my oh, gosh. Man. It's it that sincerely is... feels like it's melting in your mouth while it's yes. there, right? It doesn't have the it, I don't feel like it quite has as full of a body, at least in my mouth feel as one uh, point one, but it has that smoothness. Silky is the best description for it. And it just it feels like it's melting. Like it, it and it has a it, that spice comes through so much more clearly on the palate, but there's still on my back palate, there's still so much residual uh, sweet undertone that that, mm -hmm. that holds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the the spice is gathering all around the sides of the palate and then you yeah. feel that texture and that kind of caramel type confection kind of rolling down your throat. Oh, that's- If you, if you took that Mexican hot chocolate and made it into an actual like chocolate, and just let that like melt in your mouth. Right. Yeah, yeah. It is like, it's not only that in like flavor, but in like feeling, like the way it feels on your palate. Like mm -hmm. it literally feels like you can feel it going like all the way down. That's wild. Mm. Wow. Man, we're good at this. <laughs> Even me. <laughs> We tried to put you up, we tried to put up all winners, but coming back to these, I think I, I was impressed with your choices when when you made them, but so happy to be revisiting them now. Yeah, you know, so flavor in that like retro nature. It's like I want to sit with it, not drink. I want to go back and drink one more immediately, but I'm still with it. Like yes. yeah. <laughs> hmm. Definitely whiskeys you can spend some time with. Yeah. Which yeah. is always a challenge, right? Yeah. Doing doing this sort yeah. of thing, whether you're doing a virtual tasting or an in-person tasting it you know you just really just spend a few minutes on each whiskey and it's just not enough time cool. uh, to let it do what it does although over our <clears throat> over the course of our tour we both charlie and i realized there's a pretty big difference tasting whiskey out of a whiskey nosing glass that jenna and i have and a glen cairn that you have um, yeah. seems to change quite a bit. I, I would, I would, I wish I had a Glen Cairn on me right now. I'd love to pour this into that as well. Wow, that is, I mean, that's just like a stunning whiskey. That is just so, like a. 
folks, are, like, what are you drinking? Because I, I think uh, I think I saw one gentleman tell me that they were drinking a barrel aged beer, which I appreciate. <laughs> Nothing like a beer that's rocking like a twenty percent alcohol, you know, ABV, to uh, get you there quicker. But uh, okay, here we are with forty four point one six nine. Um, whiskey goodness is has a in a wooden box, which I believe is a a lovely sherry cask aged whiskey. Um, what else? What else you got? Tom, Tom R. R has some rum. What kind Shocking. of rum, man? Shocking Tom. <laughs> <laughs> T Roy has CW two point one. So Ooh. that's uh, that's from our friends down in Waco. That is a blue corn whiskey finished in a tequila cask, if I recall correctly. Oh, and that's a yeah, that's a heck of a dram. If that's you want to send some up to up to Washington, I won't I won't fight you. Potentially, yeah. <laughs> no, I'll put you in touch with with Jared and the gang down down there. They'll I'm I am certain you guys could could have some fun together for sure. Oh my goodness, uh, uh, we're getting into trouble. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wow, what a what a lovely lovely whiskey. Yeah, that is just stunning. That is just a beautifully just composed on entry, like on flavor, on finish. Like the whole thing is just really, really beautiful. And like big spice. That is like a just, yeah, chocolatey Ooh. spice bomb. Whew, that is, man, that's good. <laughs> Jenna, would you care to read the um, tasting note for us? I would love to. All right, so this one says, beside the lake of melted vanilla ice cream, we toast hazelnuts and rye bread as fine coconut flake snow down in the cold peppermint air. It's mm. so like a wintry, wintry whiskey, maybe. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of a wintry mix, but it sounds like I don't know. I find, it, I find it a bit more refreshing than that and, and more yeah. kind of uplifting the palate, more high-toned. Um, I would call yeah. it all. I would call it all seasons, but I'd be happy to pour yeah. a jacket with this. This would yeah, be sure. an easy way to stay warm through the winter. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so so Jason mentioned an old fashioned split mm. base of rye and bourbon. I mean, you could just put one of these in there and be sitting real pretty. I mean, I might want to sip it neat, but then again, if you want a kick ass cocktail, you just got to use kick ass ingredients. That's so, true. Yeah. yeah. Something like this in an old fashioned, maybe the first one in like a Rob Roy or Manhattan, rather, mm -hmm. even a Boulevardier, because of that. Like, you, you're a you're a big fan of that, right? You know my affection for that. We that actually, yeah, we, actually we talked about that. Like, if you had one it? one final cocktail, if it was that was the welcome happened. cocktail at our at our event. Um, That's right. But you know, you have that Campari working with, in the case of B eight point one, the big rich red fruit character, nice. Mm -hmm. Nice synthesis there. Um, but uh, in any case, cocktails for another time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's B8.2. So B8.1, we found to be pretty fruit forward, uh, for yeah. lack of a, a, a better term. And then a bit more spice forward uh, for B8.2. So we've covered fruit. We've covered spice. What's left? I mean, confection kind of runs through all of it. So let's see, let's see what this third whiskey holds for us. Um, Beams and moon boots. <laughs> Moonbeams and moon boots. Yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty far out, man. I mean, it's like literally pretty far out uh, yeah. for a title. Now, now, Garrett, I understand at this point in the program, you have a confession. I do, I do. Regrettably, as much as I loved point three, um, we are very generous. We live in a cult. We, we have less than 40 employees and it turns out all of us love whiskey. Uh, we oversampled our bottle number three. So, <laughs> so it, it did not make its way home with me from our event. <laughs> I don't we only had one, uh, point one and point two. Point three did not make it for the spirit of cheersing. I am going to be drinking. Oh, my background's not letting you gotta, like, hold it in front of your body. There yeah, there you go. Nailed yeah. it. Nailed it. Um, this is a beautiful release. Side note, nothing to do with our, our call here, but this is an apple, toasted apple stave finished bourbon that we've done. We've done it a handful of times as a limited release. It is one of my favorite finishes that we do in Woodenville. It's finished at 100 proof. Um, we do limited releases. So this will be 
uh, probably released through the country on a limited basis uh, towards the tail end of the year. So if anybody watching is interested, uh, please please uh, keep your eyes peeled for it. Uh, but this is I'm going to one of my favorite Woodenvilles since I can't partake in the third. Awesome, man. <laughs> that one is delicious. It is very good. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've housed a few of those. So. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe this is a this is a good time to talk about potentially the next releases from uh, the this collaboration that we now have because our our last cask B eight point two was was pretty spice if not rye forward. Um, yeah. So. Do you want to tell us a bit about your rye program? At, Absolutely. At yeah. Well, as I, I described our, our high rye style bourbon already, and we kind of, we, we lean towards that complement of a, a full corn flavor without being overly sweet. Um, our rye um, is pretty intense. We're one of only a handful of distilleries that are doing 100% rye. Um, our rye, I did mention earlier in, in our uh, in our stream here that the omelets had not grown rye prior to. to wait, wait, I'm sorry. 100 percent, not 95 percent, 100 percent, not 95, five, not 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 any of the standards that you see out there, not high rye, but all rye. Uh, it's more challenging to create. It's more challenging for mashing, more challenging for fermentation, more challenge. We distill off the grain there for flavor retention. Uh, so it's more challenging in the distillation process. If you come to our distillery during a rye production cycle, the morale might look a little lower with the <laughs> with the distillation because <laughs> the cleaning is a little intense. Yeah, but it's worth it. It makes a better product. It's, it's absolutely remarkable. So um, how do you draw straw? Do you draw straws? Like how do you decide who cleans the still after after teams. the rye goes through? It's in, it's in teams. We're doing uh, we're doing a twenty four hour production cycle right now. So there are three teams that get in there. So they, I think they they take turns and they fight they amicably 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 amongst themselves. They try to sort it out. Uh, or probably the the uh, the newest person has to learn how to clean it first. Sure. <laughs> so uh, newest person on shift is going to have to draw that short straw. We have all the tools you need, but the only thing we have available for fermentation with rye is the starch. Well, we do add um, uh, amazing natural enzymes to facilitate the fermentation process because starch cannot be fed on uh, by yeast organically without a little bit of a stimulation, without relaxing some of those uh, uh, those starches with enzymes to convert them to sugars. Uh, but the flavor profile, it, it is, I'm speaking as a whiskey consumer, not just somebody wearing the shirt. I think our rye is the best rye in the market. Uh, the I agree. Almond, it is I love my it. favorite. It is the best rye. The cash strength rye is my favorite rye in the whole world. And it is like, I encourage all of you out there. If you are just even curious about rye whiskey to taste that whiskey, because it is, it is perfect. It is literally perfect. I love Sorry, that. I, had I know. I, please, I love but, it. I love um, it. It sounds, it sounds, it, there's, when there's consensus and there's a outside, somebody not wearing the Woodenville shirt saying it, it sounds so much more true. Um, and the only point that I talk past is also we use a, a different type of rye. This is a baker's rye or a baking qual food grade quality rye, which has a, a slightly higher uh, oil content to it. Uh, we end up getting all the spiciness that you expect in a rye whiskey, uh, but it's somehow softer. And that 100% is just incredibly even. It's a it's a it's a beautiful beautiful expression. If you can come out to the distillery or find your hands on it in your market, you, please give it a try. You won't be disappointed. Quick question from Jason: Rye is tough to do at 100%. Do you malt the rye? Uh, Jason, that's a great question. We do not malt the rye, and that's one of the reasons that we need to um, add uh, natural enzymes to help for that uh, that fermentation process. On a really geeky level, I won't take too much time on this, but if you looked at starch under a microscope, it's just too tightly coiled and bound. Uh, it, it needs to be relaxed so that the, the yeast can uh, convert the starches to sugars and create the alcoholic fermentation process. Uh, so it's not malted, um, but it is that baker's, uh, baker's rye. And, and it does have a distinctly different tasting profile than what we see being grown out of Alberta, Canada, or Northeastern United States. Um, it doesn't lack any of the complexity that you expect and want in your rye whiskey, but it's somehow just not as sharp from a lot of other ryes that, that I've enjoyed, so. Well, um, I'm not sure I can say quite yet that it's the best rye I've ever had, but, <laughs> um, but I will say that I was personally blown away and begged for rye casks while we were out there, um, which we were not granted. They said, hey, this is a bourbon trip. 
they wanted to they wanted to keep us focused on bourbon um, <laughs> and uh yeah it, it seems like the next evolution of this relationship will will certainly involve rye to a to a great extent um we we tasted some gorgeous cask strength ryes and then we went after the after the barrel picking we went to a couple of other warehouses and then tasted some real funky stuff like yeah. was it muscatel that's like, right that's yeah. right oh my goodness oh, muscatel oh, aged a muscatel cask rye like it was out of this fucking world man i mean it, it was crazy the only reason that it's my second favorite is because I had to mention that Arbeg finished one earlier, but it is uh, it is one of the most unique expressions. And Muscatel typically is only a fortified wine that you, you'll you see aged two years. This particular Muscatel had been aged for 10 years, offered a lot more complexity, um, had honey undertones to it. And the decision uh, to, to be a fly on the wall when Brett is making this surgical decision at the proof points that these are being released at, just to, so that they're perfectly bloomed and perfectly balanced, um, the Muscatel was something incredibly unique. And we we bought those. Do you remember how big those those pipes were? Those barrels? Were huge. Like yeah, they were quite hundred great. gallons. It looked like a it looked like a like a tiny home almost. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they had to sit in there for a while to get it, but um it was such a beautiful expression. And and I, I believe that if our barrel brokers ever gave us the opportunity for something similar, uh it was a pretty rare experience. Uh yeah, yeah. we would do it again. That's great. Yeah. So let's uh let's get into this third third whiskey, huh? <clears throat> Jenna, would you mind holding up the uh, the the bottle and I'll get the banner going here? This light is so oppressive. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like my my mug is going in and out of focus here, so apologies, guys. Uh, but I mean, not that, not that me being out of focus is a bad thing, um, but. <laughs> This is cask uh, number uh, B8.3, Moonbeams and Moon Boots. Um, so five years old and the same exact proof as B8.1, mm -hmm. which, you know, uh, you, you don't really see that. So uh, kudos for consistency. Uh, these were cask strength. So um, I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure that those two were, were the two that were um, distilled on the 3rd and 5th of April. So that, that that's probably uh, what's going on there, but boy, this is almost like an herbaceous elderflower marshmallow. Yeah, it's definitely got that herbaceousness going on, right? Yeah, big time. It's a really, it's another really classy, classy nose. Yes, like that has it's some like depth. Fancy. It has angles. I mean, there's a lot of nuance going on here. While I'm not tasting this with you at the moment, one of my biggest memories from our release when we when you were at the distillery, Tom, and we oh. were uh, and we kind of celebrated that was while it was very unique within its own character, it also felt like a really strong balance between one and two, uh, for for myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, very unique characteristics, um, but sort of kind of fell in between in between the two of them in the way that it expressed itself. Well, right now it's not giving nearly as much confection on the nose, at least not for me. Yeah. I get that. You, you mentioned marshmallow. I get that vanilla, not so much the yeah. chocolate or the toffee or the caramel that I was getting before, but. It's like plushy. A touch of that, but to me, what's driving it, and maybe this is my like petrichor brain, like I'm obsessed with petrichor, <laughs> but it's like damp soil. It's like damp yeah. potting soil. I can see that. That you like spill. See where I'm going there? Like, and it, maybe that's crazy. <laughs> Garrett, have you ever gotten that on some of these barrels? Like, yes, but rare. Very, very right. rare. Right. I remember one of the things that I loved about your picks were the the little kisses of incredibly unique expressions that we were getting from these barrels. Like you truly picked unique barrels when we got that those six in front of you. And we get when we put, they were all bangers. There wasn't a bad barrel for you to choose from. Yeah. Yeah. But but the, you had the classic undertones were never overshadowed. And each one of these has such a unique individual expression. So yes, and there's a, there's sometimes a stronger minerality that can come out very, very rarely. Um, but it's 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 exceptional. It's uh I would say few and far between. Oh man, yeah. the palette is sensational. That's really, really good. Oh, I wish I was drinking it with you right now. I know. I wish you were too. Jesus. 
But here, if if B8.1 was the fruit and B8.2 was the spice, this is B8.3 is the herbaceous character. Yeah, it is definitely. it is that kind of earthy herbal. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting on, on the finish are like black jelly beans, you know, like that mm -hmm. kind of anise black licorice type yeah. appeal. I will throw in a little grandma butterscotch candy that you dropped in the dirt and then ate it. Nice. That. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. Yeah, like oh, a, there's original, like lick it and then dip it yeah, in the soil. Yeah, it's just like the dirt and you just picked it up because you're a kid. You don't give a crap. Um, and you just there's some nice, you were talking about newer leather on the second cask. This one, there's a bit more like worn leather. Yep. I could see that. Yeah. Jenna, that and description this. just tossed a vivid memory of a seven-year-old Garrett down in Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice incredibly <video>. specific. <laughs> that is uh, oh, yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. These are, I'm so well, proud well, of these. Five second rule, right? <laughs> even even yeah. when it's in, you know, in the dirt. Yeah. In dirt. Yeah. 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 I mean, these are all just really incredibly beautiful whiskeys. Like, I am over the moon that members are going to get like to taste these. Like it's as long as you're wearing your moon boots. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, they're classy. They're classy. I mean, they, 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 it, it's the the DNA is there for each one for sure. But I'm I'm really happy that we chose these three. I'm happy that we can offer them as a trio because there are enough differences between them that, you know, that it, it's just, you know, it's another, it's another, you know, proof in the pudding of, of single cask whiskey, whether it's scotch or bourbon or rye or, or whatever. And, and just as, as for passionate whiskey people to taste that you, we, you did mention there was not all the same distillation batch, but we are so meticulous for our distillation process. Our yeah. new make is incredibly consistent. There's really not, any significant variation uh, between a batch that was created one day or the other. And uh, for anybody in the whiskey society that's planning on bringing on all three of them, I just think when you are a, a whiskey fanatic, when you're a really, really passionate person about this, to have three, um, not in a vacuum, but virtually identically di distillates that are that are just all of the all of these different characteristics that we're finding right now are, are strictly from the wood. Um, it's just such a fun journey. It's such a fun journey to go on. It's, absolutely I mean, absolutely and um yeah i really look forward to coming out again and, and maybe choosing some rye barrels this year I, it's, we have we, it's we will make rye available for you and that's it's a it's a thing that um we, we'd just, be happy to make happen i was talking i was talking to a member today on the phone um and there, there's just something about the pacific northwest and specifically this greater Seattle, like, like what's going on up there? Like there are just as far as malt whiskey production, as far as bourbon whiskey or American whiskey production, you know, uh, malt bourbon rye, I should frame it like that. Cause it's all American uh, beer, um, you know, various elements of the food industry. I mean, there's just, there is just so much fertile land up there and, Everything is close by, and it's it, it just seems like this center of the organoleptic universe in the United States. And, and now, listen, I'm sure a, a lot of people could say that for a, a lot of different areas, but there's just something else going on up there. It, 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 every, every time I go back there, I feel it. I taste it, obviously. Yeah. And it's special, man. It, it's, it's a really special part of the world. We truly are benefiting from an embarrassment of riches. You know, our founder's story, they, they put a lot of risk into this. You know, they, they cashed in their 401ks. There wasn't uh, a lot of examples of success in this. Uh, they really pushed all in and they, they, are, they are the quintessential American dream for their success story and what made this happen. Uh, what's special about Washington? I think it's, it's from the land to the culture to the people. You know, you saw it on that drive with us, the topography changes that happen in, in two and a half hours. You're just, it, they're worlds apart and there's so many different beautiful things. And then culturally, a lot of things that are just supported out here and they're appreciated. 
there's a there's a there's a space in our community out here where we we generate a lot of success and i would be remiss if i did not mention the fact that Woodenville is a city in the in in the state of Washington. Uh, if anybody's watching that and doesn't know where Woodenville is, uh, we're just a little bit northeast of the Seattle area, um, just about 20 minute drive from downtown Seattle. And this story and our success has been as much about this community supporting us in those times of growth. Having never sourced whiskey in the past, you can imagine there were some lean years in the beginning, waiting for this product to come to fruition, waiting for this to be this world class style whiskey that it is. Um, and it is much as what makes the Northwest special and a long winded answer to that question is, is the land, the people and the community, uh, the support and the pre appreciation for these things that are unique. And uh, I, this is my second home. I moved here from Tucson, Arizona, as I mentioned, and uh, been out here 14 years. And it would take a pretty uh, extreme set of circumstances to pull my roots from this place now. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. it's, a special, it's a special place. Oh, that's really great, man. And thank you. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Um, so once again, ladies and gentlemen uh, who are watching and who will watch this later, we're dropping these whiskeys tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and they will be available a la carte. They will be available in a bundle for a, a slight discount. And of course, as always these days, um, free shipping on three or more bottles, which we're happy to extend to our members. Um, Jenna, it's been so nice hanging out with you. So nice to be and here. We miss you dearly. And uh <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we can find many more excuses to get you back on the on the channel. Yeah. And, you know where to find me. So. Absolutely. And Garrett, thank you so so much. So John couldn't be with us tonight. He was watching, he was watching the young one. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, his daughter, he, his, he his, was missed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a girl dad. I mean, I'm a yeah. girl dad. Yeah, that's right. Uh, girl dad too. So I, I get it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and yeah, sorry that he couldn't be on here, but hopefully we'll, we'll have you guys back soon. Definitely. And, and certainly we'll, we'll have more excellent casks from you guys to share with the society members. So um, thank you so, so much. You guys stick around when we, when we uh, close things down, but everyone who, who came in, we have a few more comments, just uh, uh, how many bottles produced were, was asked. Um, so we have about, uh, about 200 bottles of each uh, cask that, that was released um, produced, but, uh, but we'll, we'll most likely be putting those out in, in stages because it, it's going to be a while before we see anything else from these guys. So I think we'll probably release 120 bottles of each to get things going tomorrow and we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, but yeah. So uh, thank you so much, everyone who uh, tuned in on short notice and thanks again to our special guests. Um, and until next time, we'll bid you adieu. Yeah. And tonight, cheers. cheers. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Cheers.